weirdly, this is the first talk that I've done since pre-COVID. And it was at, I didn't even tell you, did I tell you this? It was at the marketing meetup in London. And then, were you there? Were you? And then, um, they li and then that was it. We were literally in lockdown. And that was the first time I, uh, the last time I did a talk. So I feel a bit, I feel more awkward actually, the fact that the whole of finally agency <laughs> are sitting on this back row here, because that's actually quite off-putting. <laughs> I'm also feeling awkward because this is a marketing meetup and I am a 20 plus year recruiter. I've done marketing for about three years, so I feel a little bit like a fraud um, standing up at a marketing meetup talking about marketing, but I'll give it a go. Um, okay, so first of all, just so I can understand who is in the audience. Uh, can I have a hands up for anyone who is in internal marketing, client side marketing? Oh, here we go. <laughs> They're all aged. Who is in agency marketing? Yeah, look at all the bloody hands. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm not a marketer. I would, uh, and I would very much class myself as a business owner. Uh, rather than a marketer. And so a lot of what I'm going to talk about tonight actually comes from that sort of commercial angle of what a business owner is thinking rather than marketing, because I, I don't want to talk about marketing in that. You guys are way more expert than I am. I, I think I want to start by saying six years ago, I would not have believed probably a single word of what I'm about to present to you tonight, because I was a business owner, I was in recruitment, and brand to me uh, was something incredibly confusing and it was arty farty, it was out there somewhere and what I wanted to see was cold hard facts and that's the problem I think we get where we start coming from a brand perspective because trying to actually find the case for brand, cold hard, net profit at the bottom, what does brand deliver, how does brand scale my business is actually quite tough and yet that's what I would have wanted as a business owner. But we are now in 2023 and if ever, and this is from my business owner's perspective, if ever there was an opportunity for small, medium-sized enterprises to start building brand, now is absolutely the time to do it. And if you don't think that brand is built on social media, then you're living in a different world. I, would, I was talking to a client the other day and they said, well, the first 10 minutes whilst we sat down and you have that little preamble before you get down to business and they were saying, oh God, social media. You know, it's starting to impact everything we do, isn't it? The politics that we believe, it skews us in certain directions. We live in echo chambers and social media is awful. It needs to be regulated. And then when you start talking about social media and its impact upon our children. Oh God, we need to control this stuff. It's, it, it can affect everybody. And yet the conversation then turned to business and he still misunderstood how social media can sell his product. And yet it's so powerful that it can affect people's opinions about politics, impact our children, but it can't sell his product because we've done social media and it didn't work. Well, bollocks. Sorry, is anyone offended by language, by the way? I should apologise because I'm probably going to swear a little bit. Um, brand now in 2023, you build brand on social media. The problem is that when marketers, I don't class myself as a marketer, when marketers start talking about brand, we use examples. I mean, they're not doing too well, actually, are they? <laughs> John Lewis in the news today, not a bit dodgy. Um, but we, talk, we, we use these as examples of the, of the way to build brand, why we should build brand, because you too can be John Lewis, Apple, Microsoft. No, I can't, I haven't got that sort of money. And that's the problem when we start talking about brand. We're using examples that are completely out of our reach. It, it, immediately, as a business owner, I'm, not, I'm now switched off because I haven't got that sort of budget. I can't do what John Lewis do. I can't do what Apple do. It's too much money. And yet, why would you spend all this money, and this is such a good example today, I think, with John Lewis as well, why would you spend all this money on TV advertising, the six million quid that you're about to spend on a campaign like this, and yet you could spend less and get more on social? Social is where brand is built. 
And you do not have to be the big boys, the John Lewis's and the Apples and all of the rest of it. You don't have to spend that much money. And in all honesty, I'm going off, I'm going off, I'm going off now. <laughs> We've done it ourselves as, as Red Sprout. We are, we're a tiny, tiny company. And yet six years ago, and I won't go into the story in massive detail. <laughs> six years ago, we went big on, on brand. I didn't really know that it was brand at the time, but we went big on video on a platform that the algorithm really supported video at that particular time. So there was luck on our side, but we went in, we went all in, and we started to build brand. And as a result of that, we are now a marketing agency. We were a recruitment agency as well that is 100% inbound. We have never made a single sales call. I've never sent a single LinkedIn message to anybody. Everything comes to us because we've built brand. And I haven't got big pockets, guys. We're small. We're a small agency, and yet we've built brand to the extent that people come to us. I'm going so off piece now. More than that, everyone that comes to us uh, is qualified to a degree as a client because they've already seen what we're like, we've already seen what we do, and if they don't like it, they don't call us. If they do like it, they come to us. There is a qualification process in there to the extent that every client comes, who comes to us knows, knows who we are. We've done this for ourselves. You do not have to spend big bucks on brand. And the reason, and this is where I think there is a, such an opportunity for, so, for every small, medium-sized business, and I, I specifically mean small, medium-sized business, because this is not the territory necessarily of the big brands, although they should really embrace this stuff. This is massively overused. It is massively misunderstood. It's a word that most people don't want to use anymore for fear of just being part of that trend. But fuck me, authenticity is the answer to this stuff. Really, really building a brand that is centered on authenticity is what's going to differentiate you from all of your competitors. Now, Liv took the piss out of me earlier because I'm supposed to know who some of these people are. <laughs> Does anyone else know who these people are? No, you see, I'm not the only one, it's just you. <laughs> Apparently, these are influencers. Um, there was a, uh, a survey done, and this is really quite interesting because influencer marketing is one of those things that's actually quite trendy, quite on point, everyone kind of likes it. Well, they don't any longer. Um, and I think especially because of what's going on in our economy and in our world at the moment with cost of living and all the rest of it, there is 64% of the British public now lose, have lost respect for influencers who are in it for the money. That's it, it's over, game over because it's, it's inauthentic, it's not true. They're in it for the cash, they're trying to line their pockets, and we can smell the bullshit now. Um, and so they, these times are over. You've really got to lean into um, your real passions, your real niches, and be really genuine and authentic about that for people to believe you. And this is mostly because Gen Z now um, have grown up, unlike me, with the internet literally on the end of their hand, and they can um, smell the bullshit a mile away. And, and this, is, this is the issue, and this also applies to brands as well. Authenticity, how many people have done this already tonight? Authenticity, however, does not mean taking a selfie and posting it and saying, look where, look where I am. I should do that now. Uh, look where, then, no, this is, no. This is, where, <laughs> this is where authenticity goes wrong, because people think that it's about what's happening and it's not it's about the story behind for example what happens tonight it's not it's not that post that says here i am it's the video that says have you got a clicker have we got batteries for that clicker shit we need to go down to sainsbury's and buy the batteries for the clicker does the thing work christ trying to get the slides from frankie's presentation onto my presentation to get them to merge together that literally 10 minutes before we were about to kick off there's the story, there's the authenticity. Why is that interesting? Because everybody goes through it. It's, it's something that people can instantly relate to. And that's where building this sort of level of authenticity into your brand is, is so, so, so important. And the way we do this is by, mostly by storytelling. It is, it's, we are human beings, we naturally, we love, we adore stories. They have an, we can attach emotional connection with so many stories. They're the, a really good way of sharing information 
and making that information memorable. We remember it through stories. If I was to put up an Excel spreadsheet with loads and loads of data on here, no one would remember a word. But if I told a story about the, why that data matters, then we're into storytelling. We experienced a lot of this during COVID as well. And, and when you start looking at content that brands put out there, especially when it comes to personal brand and stuff as well, it's quite tell, tell, tell. And yet we hate it. We don't like it. We don't like being told what to do. We want to be, we want to be in control. We want to be autonomous. We don't like the stay at home message. And yet we sit for hours and hours and hours and we'll watch Netflix quite happily. At their heart of every single story, there is adversity. If your story hasn't got adversity in it, then you're going to immediately lose any emotional connection. There's nothing to resonate with the audience. Story building in brand must have adversity and conflict. That lack of conflict means that there is no drama, there is no emotional journey, and people can't relate to it. And therefore, it, you'll, you'll lose people's attention as a result. Who follows on YouTube someone called Casey Neistat? Anyone seen Casey Neistat's videos? God, I'm surprised actually, there's only a very, very few people. I can claim this is mine in that case. Casey Neistat is an is a American YouTuber. Um, he did a daily vlog on YouTube for ugh, a couple of years or something like that. It was like 800 videos in a row or something like that. Um, and this is the art of storytelling as far as he would, he would be concerned in terms of video content, but this also works in, in the way that you create stories. There are three acts to a story. Uh, the first is setup. And setup is really setting the scene. Who are the characters? What's their daily life? Everything's nice and this is, this is how they live their life. And then, and that can be, I mean, it can be very short, that piece of setup. Um, and then you go into act two, which is all about the conflict. From a marketing perspective, this is really more about uh, the pain point, the challenges that the client is experiencing. And if we can start talking about those pain points and those challenges from the client's perspective, then we've got some buy-in straight away because the, the clients that are watching that content or reading that content are thinking, yeah, that's me, I can totally relate to that. And then the resolution. And it doesn't have to be necessarily the answer to the problem, but it's the end of the story. So you're bringing people to a natural conclusion. And I want to just give you a quick example of, of how we do this, but in quite a different way. So this won't look like a story to you. Um, and this is the opportunity, though, for brands on how you can start taking this model and bringing this into marketing. I'll just play this. Did, did anyone see this? God. Put this out about two weeks ago um, on LinkedIn, and it did quite well. Yeah, hi, thanks for sending over the job description. There's, um, there's a lot in it, isn't there? So you want marketing to build brand awareness for the business, like Apple. Uh, you want marketing to design a new logo. You want marketing to get you to number one on Google. And you want marketing to make content for Facebook. Is that right? Oh, and LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you've said here, you want marketing to get your email marketing. You've used the word popping. Is that right? And you want marketing to create videos. Sorry, I missed that. Or vi viral videos. And also you want marketing to gener generate 30 new leads a week. Yeah, have you got a budget in mind for that? 100 quid a month. It all sounds very exciting. How many people are actually in the marketing department then? Oh, it'll just be me. When I make videos, I never hear the audience reaction. It's so weird to hear people react to it. <laughs> On the surface, that's not set up conflict resolution because it's just literally a piece to camera. Yes, I'm playing the role of a marketing manager. Who's our target audience, marketing managers? Um, set up to just go through it. Set up, I've got a job description. I've clearly now got a job or applying for a job and I'm now reading through this job description. The conflict starts to build. Oh, you want marketing to do this? Oh, you want marketing to do that? There's some humor in there, viral videos. Oh, you've got a hundred quid budget. Resolution, oh, it'll just be me, end of the story. Funny, thousand, so this, and I swear to God, this was created in, and filmed, and okay, I do this all the time. This was created and filmed with a, probably about half an hour, well, probably an hour writing the script, half an hour video, a bit of editing, um, and then pushed out onto LinkedIn. A um, Couple of weeks ago, over a thousand likes. Yes, I've got quite a nice following, so it's gonna attract some attention already. Over a thousand likes. What was really, really interesting with this though, 
is that we had peer-to-peer -peer tagging and sharing of this video. So marketing manager was going, shit, that's my pain. I'm gonna tag my mate so-and-so who is in marketing. More than that, and the bit that really shocked me uh, was that there were marketing managers tagging their bosses saying, right, see, <laughs> told ya, it's not just me. Um, and so that is a very quick example, really simple filming, but of set up conflict resolution that starts to build the audience with you, ends with some humor, and they're gonna remember that. Um, and that's, that's where leads start to generate. You've gotta have a character in your story that people are gonna to relate to, and that's why Tor would tell me all the time, it's gotta be target audience, target audience, target audience. Who's your target audience? Who is this appealing to? How can we make this content really, really appeal, really appeal to that, that individual? Um, you cannot fake, this is apparently a new TikTok filter. You cannot fake it um, until you make it. You cannot lie um, because it's totally inauthentic. Uh, you've gotta be true to your brand uh, and tell stories that resonate in the, in the fashion that you do and you tell them. And it must, must, must have that emotional attachment to it that's gonna pull people with them. Also, it must have a goal in mind. So for example, that particular video for us um, wasn't about getting people to sign up. It wasn't, it was, it was nothing more than educating, having a bit of fun, building awareness, building brand to the extent that um, we bring that audience with us, with us and make them laugh. There are six elements to building an authentic brand. Uh, consistency is the first one. If you meet someone and they behave in a certain way and you meet them the, the next day and they behave in a completely different way, it's inauthentic, it, it sounds wrong, and that's exactly the same for your brand. I hate to say this because I used to really rail against this kind of stuff, but this is where the brand guidelines really do come in. There's got to be that, that document, that piece of information that really starts to articulate the brand, how you want to be presented, how you want to talk, how you want to, um, how you want to look, how you want to carry yourselves and present yourselves, how you want to communicate. This is probably the most, one, most important one, and I think most companies these days, most clients, if you're agency side, really struck, because we get this with a lot of our clients, is this element of transparency. Please do not be afraid to be vulnerable, because boy, is it relatable. Because as soon as you start talking about actually what's going on, this is not saying, here's my books, look how much revenue we made last week, here's how great we are, here's how badly we're performing, whatever it is. Um, but it is, transparency and vulnerability here is about pulling the curtains back a little bit and letting people really understand what you're all about. And as soon as you start, and boy have I done this, I've done this um, to a wild extent, um, but boy it works. When you start actually allowing people to get to know you, allowing people to get to know your brand, the power is enormous. I put out a video 2019 that was saying, hi, my name's Mark, I've got no friends. Um, because at that time I didn't. I had family, I had career and all this other stuff. And boy, was I scared when I hit post on that. Um, but it was probably the one video that, uh, that boosted my number of followers hugely as a result. Um, but don't be scared to say, we fucked up, it went wrong. But if you start thinking about that vulnerability from a storytelling perspective, set up conflict resolution. Yeah, we fucked up. Yes, it went wrong. This is how we resolved it. And that really is important in that type of content. Content. You want people to have that emotional attachment to your brand and therefore transparency and vulnerability is really, really important. And yet it scares the shit out of most people because you've got to be brave as hell to go down that road. Integrity. Um, what drives you? What's your passions? For me, one of my personal passions is uh, neurodiversity, ADHD. I was diagnosed at the age of 52. I will talk to anyone until the cows come home about it because it's what I'm very passionate about. I'm particularly passionate about it because at the age of 52, being diagnosed with ADHD, I do start to wonder what the first 52 years of my life would have been like if I'd known. And also I'm obsessed about the fact that people my age were not diagnosed um, and what could their life be if they were now? So if I start to draw some kind of 
uh, so give people information about that, tell people what my journey was like, hopefully it will help other people. And whenever I put out ADHD content, for example, not necessarily, this is nothing to do with Red Sprout brand, for example. This is, to the, this is just my personal passion. But boy, the connection between the two is massively linked because people will, people, I allow people to get to know me and they go on their own journey to find out who I am, who I work for, what I do. And because they re relate to me and resonate with my story, they then want to say, that's the guy, if we need a marketing agency, that's the guy we want to work with because boy do I, boy, do I resonate with what he's talking about. Lying is the most simple and straightforward way to diminish trust. But of course, um, we, we don't necessarily go out and lie on purpose, but it could be the fact that we've left information on our website that isn't perhaps true or it's out of date or whatever it is. Um, and so as a brand, we've really got to make sure that we are as honest as we can be. And when we do fuck it up, um, because inevitably we do, then we lean back on transparency and integrity to fess up about it and talk to people about why it's never going to happen again. Relevancy, uh, and it's, it's the trend to jump on everything that happens. I did because I was really incensed by it. And we did have a massive debate in the office about whether we should or whether we shouldn't. I would defend to my dying breath his, his opportunity to say what he wants to say, whether I believe it or I don't believe it. Um, we've got to get rid of cancel culture and people should have an opinion if they want an opinion and be able to express it. Um, and I firmly believe that. It's called freedom of speech. Um, and that's what our post was about. That's what my post was about. There was nothing to do with the context of the particular, um, the particular tweets that he put out there. Um, and that was almost irrelevant. Um, but don't necessarily jump on the trends just because you think you should because everyone else is doing. There was a bot that called out brands that were posting formulaic International Women's Day stuff, and they called them out because what they actually, what they said in their post wasn't true. They were, they were paying women less than they were paying men, and the bot called them out. So if you're not, be very careful when you go with this stuff. Don't just post out random, I mean, the amount of stuff we get from clients sometimes is, oh, can you do us a post for International Women's Day? Yes, of course we can. What are you doing? Um, and then action. I'm nearly finished, people. Do what the hell you say you're going to do and stand by it and, and, and go from there. Where I think this is really important is that um, social media, uh, the opportunity to build brand on social media is available to everybody. I can only tell you about my own story and the fact that in the last six years I've developed a following on LinkedIn of 75,000 followers. As I said before, we are 100% inbound. We never make any sales because we don't have a sales department. We never pitch for business. We don't have business developers. Uh, people always come to us and we are tiny. We're a team of eight people in an office in Canterbury um, and yet we've never had to go out and find any of our own business. It all comes to us. And the reason for that is that social media works. If, you've got a, if you can build that brand, build that tone of voice, be authentic, be vulnerable, be transparent, then the opportunities to build those businesses are absolutely there. That is it. Thank you very much.